Hey guys, this is the market update. Crypto is under attack right now, not just Kraken from the SEC with a big fine there, but also some other companies we'll look at that are uh, getting more investigations despite having done nothing wrong throughout this whole process. And of course, that is driving crypto lower. So we'll look at the ramifications for this and how it's going to affect crypto prices going forward. I'll leave timestamps down below. When it comes to Bitcoin and crypto, though, despite really the big news being the SEC attacking Kraken and getting a settlement there, you know, why is Bitcoin selling off? You know, really, the SEC was going after specifically Kraken, which is a centralized player offering a staking service and a yield to customers. Why on earth would you sell Bitcoin because of that? Just the correlation in, in crypto, bad news and, you know, regulatory uh, headwinds, obviously just everything sells off. So that is the correlation in crypto. In terms of Bitcoin, we're coming into a big support level right here. You know, we were looking at this as support around uh, 22,000, but we've just broken it and we're coming down into this support level. Quite worrying though, is not just this at the moment, this regulatory headwind, but it's coming at a time in the market where the market had rallied a lot and then is looking to maybe come off a little bit and consolidate with some worries ahead. So what you're seeing is the positive momentum that we've seen during this uptrend just come off. This is the MACD, which is a um, momentum indicator, right? So when the momentum is to the downside right here, it's just showing you that this price momentum is just starting to kind of, you know, fall off a cliff. And you can see that really with this strong upward trend just you know, coming to an end and starting to die off. So the price action is not really very bullish right here. We have met support at this level, which is very good. But, you know, regulatory headwinds and then some uh, important figures that are coming out next week, including CPI right here. You know, if this isn't good, we, you know, we might see some more weakness here, even after this good rally. But you know, let's take it into context. Context. We were at 15,000 just a few weeks ago. So even with a, a little bit of a downtrend here, um, we are still, you know, within a recovery period. If you actually look at uh, trading as well, this is for Bitcoin. You can see the next kind of support level um, is right around this level, around 20,000. That's where a lot of volume has traded, as you can see. So for right now, we have met a bit of support, but there isn't a lot of trade around this level. And so we're going to have to work out if actually there are some buyers that are going to come in at this level or as a short term trade. I mean, you're looking at this weak price action the 20,000 is probably, you know, the next level of support there if uh, some of the fundamental news comes in a little bit weak at uh, next week, including this inflation figure right here. If you are a trader, get your deposit bonus on Bybit. Link in the description to a deposit bonus there, up to $4,000 as a deposit bonus via that link. The worry with Ethereum then, is Ethereum a security? Is staking a security? Are you going to be banned from holding Ethereum or, or whatever? So again, Ethereum actually had very good bullish momentum here. Like I said in previous videos, we had this consolidation, which, you know, can sometimes be kind of actually quite weak. But considering we were coming off this uptrend, um, we were looking for some good news to maybe push us into new territory. But the bad news from the SEC has now driven us through this support level. So not the best right here. And if you look at trading levels on Ethereum, we've just broken this. So, you know, this is obviously not bullish price action, right? We are getting a little bit of support here again, uh, which is okay, but there's really not much volume until around 12, 1300, maybe, you know, the, the 1350 level, you can see there's a lot of trade around there. So again, um, with Ethereum, you've just got this kind of gap right here, which is slightly worrying, especially if the macro news kind of piles on next week. Um, but, you know, if macro is positive, then we should see a bounce off this uh, 1450 level as that's kind of a near term support level. So it's up in the air. Maybe this uh, FUD from the, re from the regulators um, is just going to be kind of a storm in a teacup if the macro helps out, but that we don't know. Before we get into the next section, the Crypto Investor course has been updated. As you can see here, the price is going up at the end of this week, Saturday night, Sunday morning, depending on where you are in the world. The old price is still for now though. So if you wanna get in before the price goes up with the new updates, uh, then check the link in the description. So is ETH a security and are you going to be banned from holding it? So it's very important to distinguish commodities, what a blockchain does, the actual gas token, and then securities products on top. So Kraken to discontinue unregistered offer of and sale of crypto assets staking as a service program and pay 30 million in charges. Uh, Paywood Limited and Ventures, which is the company behind Kraken, 
Um, they failed to register the offer and sale of their crypto service, whereby investors transfer crypto assets to Kraken for staking in exchange for advertised annual investment returns of as much as 21%. So in terms of 21%, maybe they're talking about Cosmos staking or potentially Polkadot staking, which for the moment offer much higher yields. You know, for Ethereum, you're looking at like 4% or something like that. But is that, is staking, is the staking reward actually a security? I don't think so. And uh, within the SEC also, there's actually some dissent. So Kraken Down is an article written by an actual SEC commissioner who has essentially dissented, dissented against this decision. So there's indecision within the SEC themselves. The whole thing's a total mess. Today, the SEC shut down Kraken's staking program and counted it as a win for investors. I disagree and therefore dissent. This is Hester Pierce, who is a commissioner at the SEC. So she dissents right here. She says the reasons for that, using enforcement actions to tell people what the law is in an emerging industry is not an efficient or fair way of regulating. Moreover, staking services are not uniform. So one-off enforcement actions and cookie cutter analysis does not cut it. A paternalistic and lazy regulator settles on a solution like the one in this settlement. Do not initiate a public process to develop a workable registration process that provides valuable information to investors. Just shut it down. Why is she doing this? Well, we have to also understand that the SEC is now going through um, a once in a few year um, look from the House of Representatives. Now, the House is Republican controlled. Maybe we're looking at Gary Gensler potentially being ousted from his uh, seat as chair there. And maybe there is an, another insider who's taking the complete opposite side of this, trying to potentially take his role if um, you know the House actually shakes up the SEC. That's how I read it. But of course, we can also potentially just say that she disagrees with him, which is a very good thing. But the, you know, the fine has already been um, given to Kraken and Kraken now can't offer this product anymore. It's actually Kraken's particular product that is the problem here for the SEC and not Ethereum staking in general. So there's a distinction to be made here. But also it's not just staked Ethereum on Kraken and centralized services. There's also some other companies that are being looked at as well that really don't seem to have done anything wrong. For example, Paxos, which are consistently um, said to be one of the most reliable and upstanding members of the industry. They are now being probed by New York regulators, which is strange because they are already regulated by uh, the New York regulators. So as you can see here, an NYDFS spokesperson declined to comment, but noted the department is broadly working to protect consumers from risks associated with investing in the crypto market. Paxos has issued BUSD. So if you hold Binance US dollar, which is BUSD, that's actually not run by Binance. It's not controlled by Binance. It's essentially backed by dollars in bank accounts that are uh, run by Paxos, which is you know regulated by NYDFS, but they're still being uh, looked into for some reason. So as we can see here, the NYDFS issued Paxos with a bit license. Now bit license is one of, if not the most stringent and hard to get bit, bits of regulation in the entire crypto industry. Paxos is already here with um, you know, legal permits. You can see it legally permits co uh, companies to conduct digital currency related activities in the state of New York. Paxos is one of the most regulated, most upstanding uh, members in the industry, and it is a key player in the on and off ramp of fiat currency into cryptocurrency. So as you can see here, there is definitely this big crackdown, not just by the SEC, but also other um, parts of the industry, you know, parts of TradFi, essentially to give crypto a slap around the face after what's happened over the last few years with FTX and others. Coinbase have been a large part of this storyline as well. And as you can see, it looks like Coinbase are not going to be taking their staking product out of circulation. So Coinbase have a staking product on their centralized exchange. They also have something called CBETH, which is a staking derivative. Now, it seems to me like if you are taking what would be considered a commodity, which is a gas token of a blockchain, and then you are creating a derivative product of that, which is a securitized version of something that's happening, maybe that itself is a security. It's not a big deal. If it's a, if it's a security, it can still exist in the world. It just can't be offered to retail clients in the US. 
but outside of the US, people can buy and sell it for the most part. And if you're in the US, you just have to be a qualified investor to be able to actually handle these things. And if you're not a qualified investor, then you can just go to a regulated entity that is and potentially get some other products that they offer uh, to invest in. So it's not like the end of the world that something is deemed a security. What the SEC is really getting at is that if a centralized entity is creating a securitized product, then that is a security. For example, gold is not a security, it's a commodity. But if you create a securitized product like an ETF, an exchange traded fund, you are securitizing that. You're creating a securities product that has to have fair disclosure and regulation. So, you know, this is FUD and I get it. Like people obviously don't like this, but these things exist and they're not going away. And yeah, maybe the US has to go through a few years of all of this wrangling, but it's gonna come out the other side. These products and these blockchains are not going away. For Coinbase, you can see here, uh, these products are basically yield products. True on-chain staking services like ours are fundamentally different. Now that's the reason why Coinbase are not gonna be taking away their product. Important to know that this guy, Paul, is actually the chief legal officer at Coinbase. So he obviously has extremely good legal counsel considering Coinbase is a regulated or a listed entity in the States. So they've obviously got financial power, uh, firepower behind them that Kraken just don't have as a private company. And he thinks that their staking product is above the law and or above this ruling. So interesting to see that maybe they think theirs is not going to fall for the same fate that Kraken's product did. This FUD is not great news in general, but it's what the industry has to grow through to grow up and to be able to offer products to a much wider set of participants. And so for the long term, this is just part of the process. It's also pushed a lot of activity on chain. These are ETH. Uh, gas fees or base fees. And as you can see here, we've hit a high for the last seven days, you know, twice as much on-chain activity over the past day or so. When FUD occurs, you just get more on-chain activity these days as more and more people are actually just doing things on the Ethereum blockchain and taking out centralized parties altogether. So over the long term, this network is strong and growing and the uh, legalities of different products and services will just have to be fought out uh, by regulators and companies. Buy bit deposit bonus down in the description and still two days left for the old pricing for the crypto investor course. Check that via the link down there as well. I'm James with MoneyZG. Cheers for watching and I'll see you in the next one.